Hey beauties, welcome back to my channel. Notice anything maybe missing? <laughs> yes, I changed my hair or maybe lack thereof. I am utterly obsessed. You better believe I didn't do anything to it today. I woke up and I was like, hey, it's still cute. And we went straight into makeup. Do you know how much time I have saved just for my face? <laughs> if you are feeling this as much as I am, thank you. I'm feeling super cute. If you hate my hair, I have amazing news for you. It's not your hair, you don't have to worry about it. Now that that is out of the way, let's talk about what we actually came here for. Jeremy Scott and MAC Cosmetics. In case you guys aren't familiar with who Jeremy Scott is, he is a fashion designer and he's the creative director at Moschino. And he has collaborated with MAC Cosmetics to bring this 90s realness. It's amazing, like look at this, this is the packaging. Oh, it's so cool. This collection has three different items in there. The first thing is the boombox looking eyeshadow palette. This has 29 shades in here. Let's see if I can show them to you, it's so big. This thing's huge, you guys. This is what it looks like. You can see everything looks like the beats of music. It's really neat. And these are supposed to be limited edition shades. While the majority of them are, there's some like electric eel that are still in the current collection. So I'm not sure why they did that. And this is $75. With every one of the products, you're getting one of these plastic sheets with the names on them. But then they also have the names written on the back. So you've got them either way. Next up, we have a lip palette. This is the Bump and Jams. <laughs> and this is $35. Again, it's supposed to be all limited edition shades, but Violetta is in here, Mirage. So I don't, again, I don't know why they did that. So these are definitely not all limited, but the majority of the collection is. And then the last thing, also $35, is the Cheeky Volume 1 mixtape. This contains the highlighter, bronzer, and blush. I haven't heard these names before, I could be wrong, but this one seems to be the only one that's truly 100% limited edition. The eyeshadow palette definitely is majority limited edition. I'm gonna go through all the swatches with you guys and then you'll get an eye tutorial, the cheek and lips as well. So I'm gonna start off with the eyeshadow palette. This was incredibly hard for me to swatch, so I just did the very best that I could on my daughter. I can barely stick my fingers in these. If you see like my finger up against this, it was hard to like dig in there and get a swatch. So I just popped them on all popped them all on her. And I will say when I was swatching them, this first half right here it was swatching a little iffy. I wasn't sure if it was just because I'm um, swatching them, if they're gonna perform differently. But then this half of the palette swatched much better. I obviously have not used all of these shades to be able to tell you if they are good or not, but I did wanna mention that. And I think you can see in the swatches even that they're a little inconsistent. The names of the shadows in the palette are Lo-Fi, Creative Copper, Bite the Beat, Endless Frequency, Disco Therapy, Superior Sound, Happy Song, Bird's Eye View, Walking Heartbeats, Vacation Size, Zone, Ghost Story, Morning Ticket, U.S. Dance Remix, Subtly Elegant, Bonus Track, Beautifully Charred, Raven Eyed, Video Emotions, Memories of Space, mix, Remixology, Beat Detallica, Synthesize, Oldie But Goody, Powerful Romance, At the Turntable, Electric Eel, She's a Machine, Jam Session, and Club New Wave Mix. For the lip palette, we have Carmine Rouge, Mirage, Violetta, Breathing Fire, that one definitely has been out before, Happy Song, Living in Stereo, Digging It, Night Club School and Wild Memories. And then last but not least, the face palette. This is Heaven in Your Smile, Acoustica, and Wall of Desire. All right, you guys, let's go ahead and jump into this look and we will chat after. I'm starting off with the face. I'm going to use this little CD here. This is a Cheeky Volume 1 mixtape. It's so cute. It just comes right apart like that. You've got a nice mirror in here and then the names are on that little plastic sheet. I'm gonna start with the middle shade as my bronzer, kind of, it's almost like in between a bronzer contour, but we'll see how it looks on the skin. I'm gonna use my Kylie number three. <laughs> I'm gonna have to figure out what brushes work with this Ooh, that's pigmented. Uh, <laughs> laugh when I hear anyone else say that's pigmented and I just said it so it's really goofy to me. I have to try to keep this out of my hair again. When I was platinum before, I had a hard time, but I could at least like wash it out with a little wipe. Now if I wash it off, it's also gonna wash off my makeup. So I'm gonna just try and be careful and not dye my hair brown. Bronzer brown. Ugh. 
I will say this is very pigmented. Like I'm barely tapping in with this brush and you get a lot of product on there. So you gotta be careful if you're pretty fair like me. I'm an NC20. Delium 785, I'm gonna run this on my nose just a little bit, and this brush is like one of the softest little blending brushes. And that's why I'm using it, because this is really pigmented, and I don't want it to be too pigmented. Or, I don't know, I don't want too much product on my nose. <laughs> so I think this actually looks pretty nice. It blended out really well, especially seeing as I don't really tend to go for a matte bronzer. But this looks nice. I'm happy with it. I'm going to take that same brush and I'm going to go into the blush shade right here. And do you see this? I just tapped in there. Barely. So we're going to knock some of that off. A little update on this brush here. The number three from Kylie. It has started shedding on me. So whenever it came out till now, it has just started shedding on me. I do use it quite a bit because I really like it. But keep that in mind now. I told you guys I would let you know how they held up. And it's not like terrible, but I've had like two or three come off just, just now. The highlight shade right here in a Linda Hallberg 306. Barely tap in there, you guys. And, oh, that's pretty. That's nice. I'm gonna buff over everything using my Sicily powder, nothing different, and then I'm gonna zoom you guys in for the eye. I'm gonna start off with Bite the Beat on a NARS 42. I'm gonna use this as a transition shade. Not a whole lot right off the bat, so I'm gonna add some more. I'm starting off in the crease and then blending upward using small circular motions and windshield wiper motions. Wayne Goss number 20 and the same shade. I'm just running that right underneath the lower lash line. MAC 217 and Remixology. I'm popping this into the crease and then I'm going to work it up. I meant to say as well at the end of that sentence, but for whatever reason it just didn't come out. <laughs> so I'm just layering this up a little bit and blending upwards. Again, same shade underneath the lower lash line. Same MAC 217, and I'm gonna take Beat Talica. I wanna put this in the crease first because I'm gonna pop this all over the lid as well, but I wanna blend it in the crease first so that I'm not like over blending and ruining what I did on the crease if I do it last. And again, when I have the least amount of product on the brush, I always take the excess and blend it upwards. Delium 777, and I'm going to pack this on the lid. And I've got to tell you guys, I'm having a little bit of issue with this dark green. I'm definitely being able to make it work, but it's not like the easiest thing to work with. I'm taking a Delium 776, and I'm taking mix or remixology, that light green. I'm trying to go around the edges. I'm just not loving how this is blending out. So I'm just trying to make it look just a little bit better. Again, in with Beat Elogica, and I'm running this underneath the lower lash line. Okay, can you guys see this? Like, the product is creasing in, like, or I guess moving in my crease. Never has that ever happened this fast. And not only is it kind of splotchy, but, like, what? Delium 781 and Memories of Space. I'm just going to pop this on the inner corner and then I am going to go add liner and lashes because I'm so over this. Eyes are all done. I tried to perfect it as much as I possibly could. I added on lashes and liner. Everything will be listed down below. And then for the lips in the palette, I'm going to use this shade right here. It's Living in Stereo and my MAC 242. Apparently, all of my lip brushes are dirty, so we're gonna use this one. And my lips are super like flaky, dry, disgusting, so I have the lip primer on. Hopefully that helps. This is the finished look, however, 
My lips are so dry. I really just want to put on a gloss. So I'm going to take Milk for Honey from Smith & Colt and pop this on just, just to help my poor little lips. <laughs> I even got the Laneige something lip mask for sleeping at night. Have I even brought that out yet? No. Why? I don't know. I just don't think about it. Anywho, let's go into the final thoughts of the collection. I think the packaging on everything is outstanding. Like it feels heavy in your hand. It's not plastic. It's not cardboard. It's like this metal. Very nice. That goes for the other palettes as well. MAC really spent time, money, everything on these and I think they did a phenomenal job. This palette right here, oh, I, I didn't even notice that. It's like a CD on the opposite side. That is so cute. I had no issues with these. If anything, they were just really pigmented. I thought everything looked really nice. Even the highlight very, very pretty. When I first touched the highlight, I thought that it was going to be too dry, but it's not. It looks really good. Actual product wise, this one would be my favorite. The lip palette, super cute. I like the product inside just fine. Like there's nothing wrong with it. I just don't use lip palettes. This is purely nostalgic. It's just, I like it. <laughs> the eyeshadow palette, the packaging, like I've already said, amazing, but I am a little disappointed with the quality in here. I don't think it's terrible and it's not even bad or anything like that. It's just not great. And for $75, I know that is the packaging here. That's basically what you're paying for. But I really wanted these to be just a little bit better and I can really only speak to the ones that I use today. Again, did I get a great look? Yes. I just had to work a little harder than what I wanted to for it. For me, this was like a must have. I had to have these items in my collection. If you are buying the eyeshadow palette for the shadows inside, I would say pass. The other two items, if you want them, definitely two thumbs up on those. But for me, this is just I had to have these. Like, these are a makeup collector's dream. From the outside packaging to the inside, they're so cute. But let me know down below if you grabbed any of these, what your thoughts are, if you liked them, yada yada. And I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye guys!